Good morning, everyone, um, to our UK businesses and also good afternoon to our Sri Lanka businesses. Um, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we are co-hosting with our partners um, of the High Commission of Sri Lanka. Um, I'm really excited to be here today. We have uh, a brilliant lineup of, of speakers who are going to give you um, a lot of insightful information around trading with Sri Lanka. Um, some really exciting times going on with Sri Lanka at the moment. Um, so we're really looking forward to hearing all about that and how you can get involved and how your business can get involved. Um, just a little bit of an update um, from the Greater Birmingham um, Commonwealth Chamber of Commerce. So uh, our division is one of 10 here at the Birmingham Chamber of Commerce. And uh, the Commonwealth Chamber has been set up to support bilateral trade between the UK and Commonwealth nations. Um, it's a really busy and brilliant time for us here in Birmingham at the moment, especially with hosting uh, the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham next July. Um, so if any businesses are wanting to hear a bit more about the activity that will be taking place over the next eight months, please do um, contact us. Um, for any businesses who are already existing members, you can go through your relationship manager. And if not, I'll put my details in the chat box shortly. Um, please feel uh, free to reach out to me um, at the most convenient time for you. Um, so without further ado, I am now going to hand over to Dr. Lakmini Mendis, who is the Minister of the Commercial Team at the High Commission of Sri Lanka in London. Over to you, Lakmini. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Steph. And uh, good morning to all joining from UK and good afternoon to others uh, joining from Sri Lanka. And this is actually a timely webinar organized by the Birmingham Chamber of Commerce and the Export Development Board in Sri Lanka and the Sri Lanka High Commission in London for the UK companies who are interested in knowing more about the logistics sector in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, as you know, is a well-known tourist and investor-friendly destination and also has emerged as a hub in the South Asia for services like IT BPM and financial services with a track record more than three decades. In today's context, COVID has changed the thinking and way of doing business. But still, Asia being the global production center, this mission has received many inquiries from UK companies looking at alternative sourcing destinations and relying on more locations for manufacturing distribution to ensure undisrupted supplies. And when selecting a logistic partner, it's a known fact that companies take decisions based on factors such as cost, connection, speed of delivery, infrastructure, efficiency of services being provided, the regulations, technology, and the market access opportunities, less like the FTAs and other regional agreements that the country has, especially for value addition, if the operation involves any value addition, and also the talent pool and the people skills, especially the communication skills and the investor-friendly business environment. And I'm sure the chamber will agree with me that mostly we experience these sort of partnerships are long-term partnerships and also uh, these connections are long-term connections. And Sri Lanka is one country that could tick most of these boxes, I would say, all of these boxes. So in addition, Sri Lanka's strategic location, halfway point between Singapore and Dubai provides the access to all major subcontinental ports with plenty of feeder connections throughout the week. And the world-class world ports for ultra-large ships with expanding distribution facilities provides connectivity between developed and developing countries' consumer markets. Another point we'd like to mention here is the Colombo Port City, a special economic zone, also slated as the gateway to South Asia, planned on reclaimed land in the heart of Colombo, which paves way for multi-service hub for South Asia, offering services such as financial services, education, hospitality, retail, entertainment, and will also comprise of state-of-art business infrastructure with a commitment to international green building standards as well. And when thinking of the Sri Lanka and the UK bilateral trade relations, it has been advancing for decades and the merchandise trade accounts for more than 1 billion pounds at present. Already there are over 
1,500 international investors in Sri Lanka and among them. There are UK companies, well-known UK companies like HSBC, LSEG, Delaru, and Marks and Spencer, also in the logistics sector. Finally, I believe this webinar will be an opportunity to explore diverse range of services offered by Sri Lanka, and also to get to know the investment environment and understand the reasons behind why Sri Lanka has been already selected over other countries by some of the world famous companies and brands for its logistics needs. With that note, I wish to thank the Birmingham Chamber, Export Development Board of Sri Lanka, and our moderator, Mr. Masa Korala, and the panelist, Mr. Hipgrave from the Chamber and the DGBOI, and also the representatives from three leading companies, Haley's, Expo Lanka, and Avantis, for their time and commitment to promote Sri Lanka as the emerging logistic hub in South Asia. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lakimi. And I have to agree, you know, I look forward to our long-standing partnership and uh, we're very grateful to work with you on this webinar and future activity. Um, I'd now like to introduce our next uh, speaker, who is um, from the uh, uh, Export Development Board, Ms. Indamini Kodikara, who is the Director of Export Services. Welcome, Indamini, over to you. Okay, uh, thank you, Stephanie. Okay, good morning uh, to all of you from UK and good evening, uh, good afternoon to the Sri Lankan uh, members here. And uh, uh, I would like to start, uh, though even uh, yeah, the Excellency Saroja Sirisena, the High Commissioner of Sri Lanka, High Commission UK is not here, but I would like to thank her for like uh, for extending her support and cooperation in promoting uh, the Sri Lanka Logistics Hub, along with uh, Dr. Lakmini and the other officials at the uh, UK High Commission, and uh, Mr. Joel Lake, Commonwealth President of the Greater Birmingham Chamber of Commerce and the officials at GBCC, then the speakers, the panelists, and the valuable participants. Right. Uh, on behalf of EDB, I would like to extend my special thanks to GBCC, who have like organized this uh, webinar and like we have come all the way today for this webinar. Just let me just uh, give me one minute just to talk about the logistics sector of Sri Lanka. And uh, as you all know, it's uh, the Sri Lanka is geographically well positioned in South Asia and the country's uh, proximity to many emerging markets has positioned it favorably as a very important hub in the region. So with Sri Lanka's capabilities to cater to the growing regional demand and being strategically located at this east-west uh, maritime route, Sri Lanka has the potential to become the South Asia's leading maritime logistics and distribution hub. Right? So in terms of like uh, revenue, if you talk logistics sector accounts around uh, US dollars, two billion in terms of revenue and efficient logistics services and facilitate heavily to the growth of the national economy. With the national export strategy uh, of Sri Lanka, logistics sector has been identified as a key sector and a separate strategy also had been formulated for the growth of this sector. Uh, due to this COVID-19 uh, outbreak, even uh, and we'll have to have a holistic and marketing drive to promote this sector in Sri Lanka to come to be in competitive with the uh, other partners. And as uh, all of you all know, the the purpose of today's me webinar is to enhance business cooperation and maybe look at investment opportunities and to have a win-win situation between like both the parties UK and Sri Lanka on the logistics sector and I wish all the participants, panelists and uh, everybody an interactive and a fruitful morning and an evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Indomini. Um, I do believe we're now going to head over to Mr. Rowan Masakorala. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, let me now introduce Mr. Rohan Masakorala, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Shippers Academy Colombo, who is a consultant on logistics to UN International Trade Center, Geneva, and he has over 30 years of experience in global commerce and logistics and distribution systems, 
UNSCAP Certified Trainer on Global Supply Chains and Logistics to talk a few words and to present uh, to the participants and the panelists. Uh, over to you, Mr. Rohan Atukaral. Uh, sorry, Master Koral. Yeah, so um, thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone in the United Kingdom, and good evening, fellow colleagues joining from Sri Lanka. It's a pleasure to be partnering with uh, the GBCC and the High Commission and the EDB to talk about a subject that probably most uh, Britishers or UK citizens would not be known about Sri Lanka, because I believe most of the people in UK know Sri Lanka as a tourist hotspot rather than a logistics hotspot. So today we are going to tell you that we are way beyond a tourist hotspot, but a logistics hotspot too. So the we will be having three speakers. I think the EDB will introduce the three speakers uh, once I finish my presentation. And then I will go through a discussion of uh, what's happening in the ground in Sri Lanka. So let me at the outset thank uh, Dr. Lakmini, uh, who coordinated with the chamber uh, and Andy and Steph and everybody for a few weeks and months discussing how we should progress forward to give the best solutions or options to your membership to understand the small island uh, of the Indian Ocean, uh, what it can be offering. So I have a small presentation, a few slides, which I will share with you now. So um, as you can see, uh, I have put a little bit of geographic lesson um, for those who are not familiar with this part of the world and where Sri Lanka is. Um, so Sri Lanka is in the right in the middle of the Indian Ocean, uh, 27 kilometers uh, south of India, which is uh, probably a known market to everybody. And it's surrounded by uh, the ocean basically up to the African continent and Far East uh, and the Indian subcontinent into the north. So it's about, uh, if you take a flight time from UK, it's 10 hours. It's similarly 10 hours from Australia's Melbourne capital. So it's again, center between London and Melbourne. Uh, and it is also center between Dubai and Singapore on the east and Dubai on the west. And it is, you can see the thick line of blue line, which is the east-west main shipping route, which handles a large volume of international commodities and shipments moving from China to Europe uh, and rest of the uh, world as well. So Sri Lanka has a very good market access to India in terms of geographic uh, proximity. And also it's just about four hour flight to both Singapore and Dubai, the other two major hubs in the region. So this uh, is a location that has been used by the British as a hub when they were uh, ruling Sri Lanka before 1948 for many, many uh, decades. Uh, it was a, uh, it's a trading hub for the British uh, government at that time. Sri Lanka was known as the uh, uh, main trading hub for uh, the East-West commodities, especially the tea. So the, the history talks of British using Sri Lanka as the trading hub uh, to reach various markets. So if you look at the big picture, uh, you can see the Indo-Pacific. Uh, Indo-Pacific is the region that is now talked about a lot by the uh, United States and uh, other powers, including China, also in this part of the world. At least 38 countries, 44% of the world sea, sea uh, surface area, 65% of the world's population, uh, and 62% of the world's GDP world's merchandise trade accounts to 46%, world's container trade accounts to 55%, and ship uh, energy uh, is about 70% moves in this part of the world, so which is called the Indo-Pacific region. And you can see the global population density also. Uh, Indian subcontinent is the fastest growing, and uh, this region will be having well over 2 billion people and a middle class. That is a market space for people who want to understand the market access from Sri Lanka to the Indo-Pacific. So as a result, Sri Lanka has become a very much of a hotspot for port-related infrastructure development for major powers in the world, including China, India, and other countries who are keen to develop ports here. 
as its connectivity is very strong. And my colleagues will talk about connectivity later. So to give you a bit, bit of a bit, bit of even a clearer snapshot of uh, Sri Lanka. So you can see the white lines are all feeder connective networks and the red line is the main uh, east-west route. So we are exactly between, as I said, between Dubai and Singapore, which connects us to two major hubs of the world. So Sri Lanka is all, also a hub. So for anybody who wants to get cargo out or fly in and fly out for business, it's a very friendly location in terms of speed. And if you look at infrastructure, Port of Colombo is the, one of the top ports in the world. It's ranked number 22 in the world uh, in terms of volume. And it is the only port in the world that can bring in the ever given the 25,000 TU vessels to this part of the South Asia. So Colombo port is the only port that can handle such large vessels. So obviously it therefore connects the rest of the dots in the region. And similarly, the air connectivity is pretty good from Colombo to Far East and rest of the Europe, US, uh, sorry, uh, Middle East and India, very well connected. The highest number of connectivity to India is from any country in the region is Sri Lanka. So air connectivity is also pretty strong. Um, and we have world class infrastructure. We have actually uh, two uh, major ports. Uh, one is Colombo and the Hamantote is a new port developed by the Chinese uh, companies. And we have also a natural world, second biggest natural port in Trincomalee. And also we have three international airports, which brings in supply chain security. Uh, so that means you are not dependent on one airport or one seaport. So manufacturers who are here, very happy with the connectivity and the options they have uh, in terms of uh, the logistics uh, of Sri Lanka. So uh, only thing is we have, as a country, we have not marketed ourselves very much now with the EDB and the government of Sri Lanka. We are marketing ourselves to give an insight into how things work here and how, what kind of businesses are in here already working. As Dr. Lakmini said at the outset, over 1,500 companies have invested and they are working in different zones, manufacturing and exporting out of Sri Lanka and also trading out of Sri Lanka. So some of the products that they are looking at uh, is uh, our three speakers will uh, highlight some of the services that they do in terms of logistics and fulfillment centers for clients. So Sri Lanka is an ideal place for medium to large scale companies who are looking at global markets accessing different continents uh, to achieve scale, good pricing, and also what is most commonly needed today post-COVID is reaching out to, into markets at a fast pace. So these are some of the advantages that the country uh, gives clients who are invested here, who, 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 who know the value of it, which at attractive trade rates, attractive uh, connectivity, which, which makes them uh, competitive in terms of distribution as a distribution hub. Uh, and also one advantage Sri Lanka has over Singapore and Dubai is, for example, if somebody is located in Sri Lanka, you can ship it out to Singapore in, in four days. And from Singapore, you also connect to the rest of the world in the East and the US uh, East Coast, up to US East Coast. Similarly, you ship out from Sri Lanka to Dubai. Within four days, you reach Dubai and <coughs> of African, Middle East, continent, all connecting out from there, other than the direct services from Sri Lanka. So the speed is very much higher. Uh, and there's advantage by sitting between Dubai and Singapore. And it is a very favorable time frame to do business in terms of uh, international trade and 24-7 uh, work uh, practices around the world. That uh, logistical advantage uh, is there for operators already here in Sri Lanka. So I think uh, that is the basic uh, picture of Sri Lanka, so the geography where it lies and what, what advantages it gives. And I, I, I believe my colleagues, when we are discussing, will tell you in detail some of the advantages of UK companies to look at Sri Lanka as option if they are using international hubs, Hong Kong, Singapore, Dubai. What, do they, what does Sri Lanka really offer as alternative? Uh, for these companies to come and set up or look at future distribution. So I think with that uh, initial note, I would like to hand over to uh, Indumini to in introduce the three speakers. And uh, then from there, I will bring them on, on a live discussion uh, on, on the subject that I broadly described. Thank you.
Thank you, uh, Mr. Rohan. Uh, I would like to now introduce the three panelists. Uh, three, actually, like uh, there are five panelists uh, already. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Dilipa Disanayaka, who is the country manager, APL Logistics Sri Lanka. Uh, his career has started at Marks and Spencer UK, and over he has over 16 years of experience in the logistics industry. And next is it's Mr. Kirti Senaviratna, manager marketing and business development, Expo Lanka Freight Private Limited. And he also has over 20 years of experience across various industries, such as consumer electronics, hospitality, freight, and logistics. And next is Mr. Sagara Piris, Director, Advantis Free Zone Limited. He has over 28 years of experience in logistics industry, and he's closely working with authorities, clients, and associations to promote free zone businesses in Sri Lanka. And Mr. Pasan Vanigasekara, Director General, Board of Investment of Sri Lanka. You also have served as a consultant to Fortune 500 companies, including global financial institutes and corporates with expertise in nine key sectors. And uh, we have with us Mr. Andy Hipgrave, a specialist global logistics advisor, Department of International Trade UK. Uh, with that, I would like to now hand over the panel to Mr. Rohan Masakorala. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Indumani. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so we have these five panelists uh, who will be discussing over the next 20, 25 minutes about Sri Lanka in a little bit more detail of what they do. Just to tell you, uh, I'll start with um, uh, my friend uh, Dilipa. Uh, he's, he represents APL Logistics, a multinational uh, who has set up operations in Sri Lanka and uh, also Expo Lanka. You might think that it's a Sri Lankan company alone. No, it's also a multinational Sagawa Corporation of Japan is uh, the main uh, partner of Expo Lanka. And then of course we have Haley's Advantis uh, who are uh, well established Sri Lankan company uh, who has offices all over the world, who has the experience in handling logistics in many parts of the world. So all three are already operational in Colombo, facilitating uh, exporters, importers, traders, and multinationals who are doing various types of trade. So I would like to uh, start up with uh, Dilip himself, uh, uh, asking him the asking him to give your audience why a company like APL Logistics, again, a Japanese Singaporean uh, operation, position themselves as a, as a company and why they came to Sri Lanka. You can explain from there, uh, Dilip, over to you. Thank you, Rohan. And good morning to everyone uh, joining us from the United Kingdom. Uh, so Rohan, from Napier Logistics point of view, uh, we are a network driven business. Uh, we operate in 60 countries through our own offices. And part of this is uh, establishing strategic hubs uh, so that we can give uh, uh, flexible logistic solutions to global clientele. Sri Lanka, is uh, chosen uh, specifically focused at the region uh, Bay of Bengal. And uh, there are two points to highlight with regard to Bay of Bengal. Uh, that includes south of India, uh, east of India, and also Bangladesh, mainly focused. Uh, if I look at India, it's, it's a $3.06 trillion uh, GDP uh, economy, uh, growing at about 7.3% uh, forecasted for the next five years. The exports accounted for about uh, 341 billion uh, during uh, the, uh, the, this year, up, up year to date, and uh, imports uh, equal 314 billion. Uh, Bangladesh, uh, again, a 310 billion uh, economy growing at a rate of 6.3 uh, GDP uh, growth rate. So uh, being in the middle of these two uh, growing economies, uh, we see a great opportunity to facilitate logistics uh, in a regional context. We also see that uh, some kind of trade shifting uh, we experienced during the pandemic, uh, the reliance on 
China, you know, the disruptions on the supply chain, and there is some emphasis that you de-risk and uh, uh, in terms of business continuity planning, have some portion of the business sourcing to be shifted to Asian countries. And there'll be a portion shifting into uh, South Asia. And Sri Lanka being one of uh, the manufacturing countries specialized in uh, high-end apparel, uh, we see uh, that kind of growth coming into the country as well. And these are the key reasons uh, we decided to position a regional hub in Sri Lanka. Uh, also, uh, Dilipa, can you uh, educate the audience in terms of connectivity, in terms of both air and sea connectivity out of Sri Lanka? What kind of advantages do you see uh, for clients uh, who are distributing or, or exporting or importing out of Sri Lanka to various markets? So, as I mentioned, uh, we focused on Bay of Bengal. And if you see Bangladesh or the south, southern part of the India, uh, the closest uh, hub port where mother vessels can, uh, as, as we said, uh, Colombo is uh, one of the top uh, hub ports in the world. Uh, in terms of Drury Index, uh, based in uh, the UK, uh, we are number 11 in terms of connectivity. Uh, in terms of draft, deep draft, uh, we are the only port which can accommodate Megamax vessels. Uh, so as a result, uh, this is probably the best uh, port for the mother vessels to call where Bangladesh and uh, the southern part of India is almost completely reliant on feeders. So Colombo is the key connecting point uh, for the region. Uh, if you see the connectivity, if the closest being uh, Singapore, uh, from India, it will take eight to 12 days to go to Singapore. From Bangladesh, it might take about eight days. Whereas if you select Colombo, uh, from southern part of India, if, if I take to the Korean, it's less than a day. And uh, if you go to Namashiva, it will be uh, less than four days. Bangladesh, four to four and a half days uh, in Colombo. Uh, and uh, additionally, within the country, the turnaround time, uh, uh, we have a very efficient system in the country, provided no exceptions. Uh, we can turn around uh, cargoes arriving in Kalabu port, uh, take it to, to the fulfillment center and do the required uh, fulfillment, do changes, do multi-country consolidation and uh, bring back the box and hand over in the port within 24 hours. So that's uh, the, the efficiency of documentation process is uh, quite impressive. Uh, so that adds up uh, to a few other capabilities where we can offer uh, new products like uh, ARC. For example, from Bangladesh, uh, it takes four days uh, a, a vessel to reach Colombo and connect to a mother vessel. And we all know uh, in the real world, uh, everybody is struggling hard to produce. There are delays. And say you delay the boats in your origin countries, you still have the option to air freight it to Colombo and connect it to mother vessel. I mean, these are key advantages we see to the supply chain in terms of lead time uh, and in terms of cost. Yeah, just to educate, uh, what would be the transit time generally from Colombo to the UK port? Yeah, it takes, uh, as of now, uh, it takes about uh, 30 days, uh, 29. If it is Felix to 29, uh, uh, Southampton, uh, Southampton is about 29. Felix to is about 30 days. Right. Thank you, Dilip. I'll come back to you and uh, I, I will go to uh, uh, Sagara Piri. Sa Sagara, you operate uh, what is called a hub or a freeze, which is a new concept in Sri Lanka, which is somewhat equivalent to Jabalali free zone or Singapore free zone. Uh, so can you just brief up the benefits of uh, the, the new concept of free zones and how, how you have operated as a free zone operator? Yeah, yeah Ron. Uh, first of all, I like to say Aibohan, which is the traditional way of greeting people in Sri Lanka, which means may you live long. So I want everybody. Um, yeah, Aran, uh, you're asking about the key benefits of uh, using free zone. Uh, 
uh, I think uh, the, the previous speakers already touched upon the geolocation. Uh, geo free zones requirement comes with the geolocations also. Uh, since they have already touched upon the ISC and now geopolitics, I'm not going to touch. Um, free zone, um, actually this concept was uh, developed in 2013 under Sri Lankan government uh, commercial hub back. Um, that means Sri Lankan government was um, saw this requirement. We always place Sri Lanka as a um, uh, logistic uh, global hub, just to, um, but that time we were purely focusing on uh, transshipment, but apart from transshipment to bring a lot of other value additions to the global supply management, government introduced the, the free zone concept to Sri Lanka. So currently about good four or five operators are uh, uh, operating under free zone license, which all three uh, uh, panelists are uh, supplying the same services. Um, if you look at um, free zone operation, uh, it's basically a seamless operation. If you want to start uh, or do business in Sri Lanka um, yeah, under free zone, um, you don't need to register any uh, company or anything like that. Uh, you can straight away work under the free zone uh, operators agreement. Um, so to handle any cargo, you just need only three documents. Once you enter an uh, agreement or a like, contract with the free zone operators, uh, if you want to send the cargo to Sri Lanka, you just need only three documents, which is BEL, uh, a BEL uh, invoice, and the packing list. As long as you have these three documents uh, submitted, the free zone local operator can handle the cargo. Uh, also very important, unique uh, feature is that free zone is virtually uh, offshore location within Sri Lanka. So along with that, um, it's very much similar to the Dubai and Singapore concept. Um, so under the Free Zone um, Act, uh, or uh, the scope of business, there are about uh, unique, uh, uh, the, the business area at which we currently uh, offering services, such as logistics services, the entreport services, offshore business, um, front-end services, headquarter operations, those are the things, but mainly currently a uh, lot of uh, free zone operators has optimized the use of Entreport and uh, the logistic services. Um, since we have basically been operating as offshore, um, some of the, the, uh, the, the legislations or the import export, the requirement uh, being basically excluded uh, when the cargo coming into Sri Lanka, that means you will have re no red tape uh, requirement. Basically, uh, like Action Control Act, uh, then customs audience, those will be exempted except for certain uh, requirements. Uh, then, um, if I take about uh, talk about the end-to-end -end solution which the free zone operators are offering, um, once the cargo come into Sri Lanka, the free zone operator will undertake uh, the cargo clearance from port called the CHP Customer House Brokerage transport the cargo back to the free zone facility, which is located nearby the corridor, like uh, Rohan mentioned. Uh, stuffing, de-stuffing, do all the value addition, and just in time basis, based on the customer's income, we'll be sending back again uh, the cargo back to the destinations uh, we are depending on. So that also, based on the, car, uh, the, free zone, uh, the, the cargo owner's requirement, we can arrange, whether it's C to C, Air to C, vice versa, whether it's LCL, with this courier, it's depending on the customer's requirement, we can uh, give a, a customized solution on that area. Uh, another important area is like uh, looking at our uh, geoloc uh, geolocation, the consolidated business, if not what you call the multi-country consolidation, MCC business, where we can bring cargo from different, different countries, put it to the, uh, uh, the local uh, uh, free zone operators warehouse, and also bring the local exports also in and do the multi-country consolidation based on customer's requirement and send the cargo just in time basis. Um, apart from that, one of the very key and important thing is the transparency of cost structure, which uh, the, the customer can see easily uh, how the cost structure is done uh, and how it will be charged also. Uh, there are a lot of other benefits also. I've just uh, tried to tap on the main key areas uh, coming from the hub concept and what we can offer to our customers. Thank you. Uh, I think I will, I will I will come to you again. But I want to bring Mr. Pasan Manik Sekar, who is the Director General of the Board of Investment of Sri Lanka. Now, the main institution that facilitate uh, logistic services in terms of free zones is the Board of Investment. 
Pasan, can you give us a brief, a very brief uh, uh, about how the BOI facilitates this particular sector and what kind of message you would like to take to UK investors, UK uh, clients who are looking at the Indian subcontinent and Asia as a bigger picture uh, to position Sri Lanka? What is the BOI's role and how would you facilitate uh, the UK customers? Sure, Rohan. And thanks, uh, thanks for the uh, thanks to the organizers for uh, organizing this uh, and and uh, for the invite. Um, taking a step back, uh, I would like to reemphasize, especially the recent budget, um, reemphasize the uh, need or, or, or the strategy to reestablish those five hub strategy, right? And and naval hub, the commercial hub, uh, being important elements of that. Now. Uh, there, there, the, the devil is in the detail and that, that is yet to be articulated. But one of the things that uh, the BOI has been pu uh, pushing for over the uh, uh, last uh, couple of years is for the relaxation of uh, some of the uh, hub regulations where we encourage 3PL and 4PL players to come in. And one of the uh, impediments has so far been the uh, foreign ownership uh, threshold and that is being worked out. Hopefully that'll see the light of day over the next uh, month or uh, two. Uh, that is uh, uh, that we, we are in constant touch with uh, the treasury, uh, making the justification for that uh, requested real, um, uh, relaxation. Um, and, and the current requirement, uh, as you might be aware, is just uh, uh, 3 million um, in terms of uh, the, the uh, investment out of which just uh, 30% needs to be in fixed assets. Um, and and uh, so uh, that, that's not, that, that is not uh, much of a significant investment when it comes to um, sizable investments, but uh, mid-tier investments uh, that uh, still find it a bit uh, challenging. Um, and we are also working at, uh, uh, you know, expanding the, uh, the bonded areas. Currently we have, uh, Three bonded areas: Katnaika, Kogala, and uh, the uh, uh, Katnaika International Airport uh, 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 area as bonded areas to carry out the uh, uh, logistics activities of uh, transshipment, warehousing, and and freight forwarding. Uh, um, in addition to Colombo and Hambantota ports, we are looking at uh, uh, including uh, further areas. Um, and and uh, those who come under this hub regulation gets exempted from many, uh, you know, uh, uh, legislative uh, uh, encumbrances such as customs ordinance, the Foreign Exchange Act, Import and Export Control Act, Value uh, uh, VAT, um, Export Development Act, National Building uh, Tax, uh, PAL, Exercise uh, Act, etc. So it's, it's quite advantageous to come in within that uh, purview of uh, the hub regulation. And uh, once um, uh, the, the, uh, with the port city under development, uh, the real uh, the game change would be where the, uh, uh, the global players uh, see Sri Lanka as, as one of those uh, uh, marquee hubs to be in next to uh, the Middle East, some of the Middle East ports as well as uh, Singapore, et cetera. So that is that is what um, the government is working towards. Uh, it fully appreciates. And, and this uh, five hub strategy was there um, about five, six years ago. Uh, I'm glad to see it, it coming back into prominence, um, making the maximum of, of our uh, Rohan uh, spoke extensively about our, our geographic location, right? Uh, if you just park the uh, west of the Atlantic, we are bang in the center of the, uh, the rest of the world. So uh, in the hub of uh, maritime uh, routes, aviation routes, etc. So it makes all the most sense to, to, to work towards it. And the government is, and there's appreciation at the highest echelons of power uh, of the need to promote this sector. And uh, uh, so, so the nitty gritties are being worked out. Uh, as, as I mentioned, the devil is in the detail and that is being uh, 
uh, that will be put into uh, you know uh, black and white, uh, the crossing of the T's and uh, dotting of the I's in consultation with uh, uh, all stakeholders in the uh, industry. Thank you, Prasant. Uh, so the message here is, I think, to the, my colleagues in the United Kingdom is that if uh, if you need more information in detail, uh, it is the Board of Investment of Sri Lanka that would be facilitating you to enter Sri Lanka in terms of doing fulfillment centers and value addition for exports and consolidation of regional business. So the gentleman here will always help us uh, or help you uh, to coordinate and facilitate any of the British companies who are keen to get more information. It is the place, Board of Investment. I think I will release Mr. Manigas Sekera because he's going into another uh, Zoom call in two minutes or three minutes time. So thank you very much, uh, Pasan, for joining us. And, uh, Rohan, I will I will share my personal, I mean, official email. I will take a personal interest in, in facilitating, uh, uh, you know, British business uh, in this sector. Uh, it's a simple email, dg, uh, standing for D, uh, Director General, at boi.lk, dg at boi.lk. So I will pay, take a personal interest, and that's my assurance to you, uh, in uh, facilitating uh, business in this uh, sector. Thank you very much. Uh, so I think Dr. Lakhmini, you can take a note of it and we can have the sessions going further. Thank you very much, Pasan. Uh, I Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, from, from Sagar, I'll come back to Sagar again, but uh, I, we have another speaker who is specialized uh, on the, particularly the apparel sector, which is one of the key exports out of Sri Lanka and the region uh, to the United Kingdom. Uh, so Kirti, can you, can you tell us uh, how the apparel industry is working with the United Kingdom and what, what has happened uh, specifically, I think there's have been a lot of innovation from Sri Lankan free zones in terms of technology uh, with the COVID. So can you brief the audience about uh, a major ex as a major facilitator and a uh, service provider to United Kingdom, uh, what should they know about uh, your operations in terms of uh, the apparel industry? Okay, uh, thank you, Ron. Uh, good morning to everyone from UK and good evening to people joining from Sri Lanka. Uh, I'll be sharing my screen. Uh, I have a couple of slides. Here I'm talking about uh, solutions that we could offer for apparel clients or maybe fashion and retail clients. Here, the first solution what we are giving to customers is one option that uh, we can give to customers is multi-culti consolidation. They are, the products are coming from many countries. In different, It could come in different modes of transport. But in Sri Lanka, what we could offer to customers is uh, once goods are received in a free port, we could do a piece level scanning. Once the piece level scanning is done, it comes into our inventory. And uh, the inventory can be uh, visible to the customer. And uh, based on its requirements, we could carry out a VAS operation, value added service operation, where it could be pick and pack or relabeling or uh, any operation like that. And once the operation is done on that end, then we can go for order consolidation. Depending on customer's request, we can do order consolidation and we can dispatch the shipments based on customer requests to specific store locations even. And uh, all the inventory can be visible to customer as well as we can do customized reporting for customer's requirements. The second model what we are trying to show here is again a multi country consolidation with the AQL operation. Here, it could come from a couple of countries as well as you can couple the cargo from Sri Lankan origin as well to a free port. Then we can set up an AQL uh, operation set up inside the free port hub and we can carry out the compliance checks or any other quality checks that is required. Then we can carry out uh, the next uh, pick and pack operation or the consolidation and we can facilitate shipping document creation also and consolidate and ship based on 
customer requirements. Here, what I'm trying to show the technical advancements that is provided by all the uh, Freeport facilitators, where we can uh, give them the inventory visibility as well as the accuracy through tier one warehouse management systems, and they can access the warehouse uh, inventory, their inventories 24 seven, uh, maybe even through the uh, mobile phone or maybe uh, through your laptop or, and uh, you can easily go through your inventory like doing a Google search. Going one step further, we are giving them customers digital dashboards using uh, Power BI and softwares like that. And it is also very beneficial for high-end customers where they in a meeting or some uh, other uh, away, away from their uh, workstation even, they can check their inventory and check their performance-based dashboards. And during this pandemic uh, season, uh, we this is a novel concept we tried, where a physical stock count being carried out as a virtual stock count, which is very, it's a hybrid system used in Sri Lanka and approved by many multinational companies. And it was very successful using the scanning systems. Uh, Thank you, Rohan. Those are the main advantages we can give for uh, garment manufacturers in Sri Lanka, uh, coming into uh, Sri Lankan market. Thank you, Kirti. I think given the time we have to manage, uh, I will go to Andy. Now, Andy, uh, uh, you're a logistician and you support the UK logistics industry and give advice. Uh, you've listened to all of us last 20 minutes or so. We've been talking about where Sri Lanka is, how it is located, what kind of a geography we run in, what uh, businesses we are already in, and it is already established uh, shipping hub. Uh, do you, how do you position uh, the presenters and what do you, do you have any specific uh, questions to ask them? Um, well, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, it's been very interesting listening to everybody. And all I can say really is that for every presenter, I could see there being a, a use from a UK company that I know, um, whether it be SME right the way up to 4PL. Um, I was very interested to hear about the free zones. Obviously, geographically, it is very important from your point of view. But I think um, because of the changes, obviously, with the UK and Brexit, there's been a 40% increase in, in exports to other countries. And that can only be good for Sri Lanka because obviously we are entertaining a more global market now. And that's where Sri Lanka's uh, strongest uh, benefits come from, from a global market. So I know of UK companies that I've helped uh, recently, within the last few weeks even, um, textile companies. So uh, to go back to what we've just heard there, that would be good. Um, but also luxury goods, technology goods, and all of those I could see potentially being useful from a logistics hub in, in Sri Lanka, particularly with the global market. So um, it's encouraging from my point of view to, to hear all of this. I think you are in a unique opportunity, really, Sri Lanka has to actually make the most of this now. Um, I, from a geographic point of view, you, you couldn't be in a better place. So from that point of view, you really need to push that home. I think of the UK companies that are already in uh, Sri Lanka using it is, is, is good because it's good for, to see other companies actually have done it already. And then obviously the idea of the free, the free zone could be extremely useful. And the reason I say this is because uh, in many countries now, um, the taxes, the local taxes and duties for goods coming in, uh, in some cases actually stop companies using that, that, that place um, to redistribute from because they end up paying double duties when the items sold on and they pay duties from the seller as well. So from your point of view, both air and sea, you, you have a fantastic communication situation here. So I can see if it's dealt with properly and marketed properly, um, I can see huge benefits um, from UK companies. If the UK company is watching, um, I know already that I've helped, like I say, textile companies. I've helped um, um, cybersecurity companies uh, internationally, and they could have done with a hub 
in Sri Lanka. That would that would have solved their problem. So what I'm saying to the UK companies listening to this is that please don't be afraid that there's a lot of information out there that I think because the global market's uh, always changing, that uh, Sri Lanka could offer a lot of UK companies a way out, as it were, another another level to what they do currently rather than it being just b2b direct and obviously with things like free zone that can help you enormously as far as costs are concerned so from my point of view and my perspective it's all positive um i think it's something that every uk company needs to look at if they are intending to be on a global market and that doesn't mean to say that you have to be already i think it means that if you plan to be and you have a strategic plan to do that then Sri Lanka could be the next step for you guys, you know, with regard to fulfillment, um, which is obviously very important. But global fulfillment is a key factor when you're thinking about scale. And Sri Lanka is perfectly situated. Yes, so thank you, Andy. Uh, just to let you know that uh, I think uh, my colleagues can tell, we are uh, beyond textiles, we are doing uh, wine, wine and spirits, to toys, rubber tires, uh, and we are looking at a huge e-commerce market in India, which is uh, valued to be around $120 billion in the coming years. So it's a massive uh, connectivity issue that when you are having e-commerce, you have a distribution center to reach customers, uh, B2C. So B2C business is a growing business. We all know people are buying everything on the internet as much as possible today. Uh, and Sri Lanka is becoming, uh, attractive in that area for investors. So UK customers can look at products out of UK if they want to reach a large middle class in the Indian subcontinent and beyond. Here is a location of a fulfillment center and value addition center and a distribution center that reach customers within hours through air to deliver your goods. So this is something that we also want to promote. And I must tell you, we were planning to come to the United Kingdom last year to do a road show uh, in London, um, and uh, probably our High Commission can look at it once things are better within the next six months. And also, I, I, I would like to see if the Greater uh, Birmingham Chamber could uh, also look at in the medium to long run, getting a team to work, come and see Sri Lanka uh, and visit these facilities and to see to themselves what is going on so that then they will see. Because as you said, we have been absolutely poor in marketing ourselves. Uh, other than a tourist uh, destination and a cricketing nation, uh, we are where we are. But in terms of international trade, having a British uh, history back in the colonial era, we, we have actually poorly marketed ourselves to the United Kingdom. So this is a start, and uh, I think it's an extremely good uh, conversation we had with the chamber today to uh, give our views. I think we have limited time, but. You can contact each of our speakers directly for more information. And this would, I would say, the first stepping stone towards a more fruitful dialogue and understanding logistics so that companies are looking for profits. We know UK companies are looking at locations. Obviously, we are all looking at profits. And we probably are a good stepping stone to increase your profitability and to market access. So I don't think I have much more time looking at the clock to do the finishing up touches. If there are specific questions, uh, our speakers will take one or two, but uh, I would otherwise hand over the uh, proceedings to uh, the organizers from here onwards. Thanks, Rohan, and thank you to all of the speakers. Um, we do have about five, you know, I can push it to probably five past 11 at a push um, to answer any questions. So if anyone does have any questions, they want to pop into the Q&A or the chat box below, please do. Um, and myself and my colleague Demi will um, monitor those. Um, but I guess uh, from, from all of you, I don't know, Rohan or, or Andy, if you have any more specific questions you want to ask um, the speakers today that can benefit some of the UK businesses. I know, Andy, you've just touched a lot on, you know, how brilliant geographically placed Sri Lanka is and that you've already been working with some UK companies who will benefit from Sri Lanka. But is there anything else that you think the businesses need to know at this point? I have, I have a question as the moderator on behalf of all three speakers. So, uh, through your chamber, 
what would be a couple of next steps that beyond this, uh, maybe after two, three months, maybe the people have seen this presentation you know, online to YouTube and then whether we could, uh, we could get some questions uh, in terms of writing uh, to our hand so that we could specifically answer and get in touch with the chamber and your members uh, so that the dialogue can be built rather than stopping at this uh, for the future. Okay, so obviously from, from our point of view, we have a lot of access through our social media channels and our network. Um, so after this webinar, we can um, reach out to certain businesses, members that we think will benefit. Um, I think it's really important to maybe look, as you said, in the next six months to look at potential delegation. Um, and if you are coming to London to maybe use Birmingham as one of your destinations, where again, we can facilitate a round table, obviously include um, the Export Development Board and the High Commission of Sri Lanka based in London. Um, and also then look at potential um, opportunity of a trade mission, you know, and, and Andy can kind of vouch for this. We know that businesses are keen to um, go out to, the, to, to certain countries and understand um, and see the facilities themselves, um, but also to, to ask the questions of what you can help with to get them started and get them to where they need to be. Andy, I don't know if you want to kind of add anything onto that. Sure. I, I think uh, it's important that, um, that people are made to realise um, just how good Sri Lanka could be for them potentially. So it's very important, really, that Sri Lanka... Um, puts a positive note on it and obviously the free zone is one of the incentives but we really need to make a really strong case because at the end of the day we are um, not coercing but we we will be uh, helping them to make strategic decisions for their businesses so ultimately they need to know that all of the advantages are there for them so um, I would say um, from a PR point of view for Sri Lanka we need to list case studies of people that have already done it and then we need to make sure that we list the advantages and show them in action of what that means to their businesses. And like I just said, you know, one of those things could be duties. I know that that's an issue in some cases. So ultimately, um, we just need to highlight the real advantages that, that Sri Lanka can offer as an alternative to other, other modes and really, really push the global market because that's where it's going to end up. You, you will be the hub for the for the world potentially and that's just purely because of geographic location so we need to make a really strong case for you guys yeah so uh, i would like to thank all the speakers and andy and uh, chef for everything for facilitating this and joining us one last remark from me before i hand over to the organizers once again is that um, human resources which i didn't speak or we didn't talk too much about uh, Sri Lankans are actually very, very skilled people and our language capability, I think most of you can understand very clearly the English language we speak. So it, it helps uh, helps business in terms of uh, human resources and our people are really trainable and skilled staff. So it, it takes a lot of burden out of foreign investors when you work with Sri Lankans, they suddenly realize, oh guys, these guys are really talented. In fact, a lot of Sri Lankans are working in the Middle East in this particular field. Uh, same in uh, Singapore. So the human resource skill I didn't emphasize much, but it's one of the key pillars of as a country uh, which we can also offer. So with that remark, I would like to hand over to close the proceedings. Thank you very much for inviting me to moderate this session. I hope everybody had a some kind of opening and eye, eye opener of what Sri Lanka is all about in terms of logistics. Thank you very much. Thank you, speakers. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rohan, um, and thank you to all of the speakers today, um, and also thank you to the Export Development Board um, and Dr. Lakmini Mendes from um, the High Commission. Um, it's been a really insightful webinar. Um, obviously, today's been recorded, so um, for anyone that's registered, they will automatically receive the recording um, within the next 24 hours. Um, but if anybody has any extra questions, please come through to the chamber and we can um, send those questions off to our speakers today. Um, but I look forward to working with you all and continuing our, our relationship. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Stan. Thank you.